Yo, what is going on guys? It's your boy Sue here. Bring us in a Photoshop tutorial. I actually bring you guys today another cool little video. If you haven't yet to notice, like the past three or four weeks, I've been doing these quote unquote multicolored theme videos. And of course, that was for an actual reason. You know, the first one was actually a banner. The second one was the logo tutorial for the negative space logos. The third one was a video overlay. And then today I'm gonna finalize the entire thing on making cool multicolored, uh, I called it streaked. Um, thumbnails. So that being said, I did this for uh, for a reason. So you guys actually create your own rebrand. So yes, you guys understand. It was actually a little series for you guys. I didn't say anything. I just like went along with it and see if you guys caught on or not. But it was a, li a little rebrand for you guys. Actually, you know, if you guys put all those together, you have a nice clean looking channel and it's looking all nice and you know themed and actually just flows all together, right? So I hope you guys enjoy those videos. If you have yet to see any other ones, I will put them down below the description so you can go watch them and enjoy them, all that cool stuff. Anyway, for this video, I have an example here of these streaked thumbnails that I'm talking about, which is very, very, they look very nice, and I just, I love them. I've been using them for the past, like, three weeks or so, and they've been just so clean. I just, I love the feel of them. I just, like, it's so simple and quick. So that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. So don't forget, 200 likes on this video, see you down below. And I do understand, a lot of you guys have been saying, you know, I, I really suck at, you know, quote-unquote, I suck at backings which is like another way I suck at, you know, creating or I guess starting a, a banner or a, or starting a background for a thumbnail. So that being said, hopefully this video can clean that up for you guys and give you guys a little inspiration on that part. Anyway, let's get going on this video right now. We will hide this layer and start off with a new layer. Boom. All right, cool. And you guys already know, if you've been watching for like the past three weeks or so, you guys already know the whole multicolored thing when I pick the colors and such. So, of course, if you guys do not know, I always like to pick darker skin colors or whatever the color I'm choosing. I'm choosing any color. I'm always in the middle of this color picker because when I use my white highlight brush to get two tones of colors, I will put that on overlay and it'll just give me nice two tones of colors. It looks very nice and clean. So... I'm going to use this red for instance. I'm going to press enter because I want that one. And if, of course, if you don't know already for the quick uh, shortcut, is actually alt backspace uh, for the foreground color. <clears throat> so now we're going to press control shift N and we're going to use a white brush. So I'm going to press B on my keyboard and we'll go ahead and use a soft brush. I'm going to use control and alt and right click to actually lower my diameter. And we'll change this red to white for now. And we're going to go ahead and basically do a nice little C formation, I guess, like a little C. Well, not a little C, but like a, I guess you could just say how I'm doing this is I'm like making a C. Yeah, that looks good. Why not? All right, cool. I'm going to go ahead and put this one on overlay, this layer on overlay. And I already see I have like a very vibrant red and a nice little darker tone red, which is like battle each other, looks all cool and stuff. So that being said now, I'm actually can already go to the uh, the advanced, or excuse me, the adjustments layer, which is like the adjustment little circle thing, the adjustments, you know, selections here. I'm going to click solid color. And I already have a color selected. I want to use this orange. And I'm going to go and press OK. And then if you guys don't know already, if you click on this little thumbnail right here, right next to the color picker on the uh, the color fill, you'll see this turns to white and black. And what you got to do is you just press E on your keyboard for the eraser tool. And what you can do is you can erase this. Now, by the way, I, I, I ran into this problem before. If you're if you're unable to erase, uh, erase on this um, thumbnail, if you click on the thumbnail and you cannot erase and you see like it's not doing anything, like not you can see it's not erasing. Um, if you guys didn't know already, when you click on this thumbnail, if I click here, if you look here, once I click on this thumbnail, this turns white and black. If for some reason you change the color from uh, white to black, or just basically what I'm saying is once this changes and you see one color doesn't work, just click on this. You'll see if I try to use black and try to click and erase here, you won't, it won't work unless I use white. If that's your problem and that's your issue, you can fix that. Now you know how to fix it, all that cool stuff. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to just simply erase to get some cool little tones of color here. Uh huh. Uh, if you get to change this from normal to color, geez, that was looking weird. All right, cool. So now I have these two separate colors, either orange and red. So I changed my color fill to the color. I don't know why I didn't change, but I, d I thought I changed it anyway. Just change your color fill to color, and you'll see here you guys these two nice little colors. And I'm gonna do really quickly is I'm gonna select all my color fill, hold shift, and then select my last layer. I'm gonna click. Uh, I'm gonna hold Control J to duplicate. And then I'm going to hold Control E to merge something together. And I'm going to go ahead and change this layer from normal to multiply. And I'm going to go ahead and just lower the opacity down so I can get a nice darker color. But I kind of want to just lower it down just a little bit more. So I'll say about 50, maybe 50. I can always go back and change it. But now comes the part where I guess I can start doing the little streak things, right? I did for this right here, the example right here. So we're going to start doing the streaks, which is in the background right here, which is the whole point of the thumbnail. So we're going to go ahead. I'm going to make a new layer, and I'm actually going to give you what you're missing, which is the uh, distort brush. If you guys have any distort brushes, meaning like something something that's just very like abstract, so something like I'll say this. Um, 
something like this. Like this brush right here is very abstract looking. It's just a distorted kind of brush. And if you guys don't have any brushes like this, I actually made a video on how to make any like brushes like this. But if you guys don't, I'm gonna actually put a little three brush pack uh, for you guys to use for distort brushes, just in case you have if you don't have any. And if you don't know how to install any brushes, it's gonna be a uh, I think it's a dot arb file or abr file. I don't know for whatever it is, whatever the download I gave you is. Just right click in your canvas in your Photoshop. Uh, with the brush, of course, and you'll see this little thing pops up. All your brushes are going to be here. Go to your uh, your cogwheel and go to replace brushes, and then just click on my brushes, and then they'll upload, and you'll see the brushes that I uh, you can use. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and take a distort brush. I'm going to just click maybe like once or swipe once over, maybe swipe again. Why not, right? And the whole point of this is just to cover your your the the backing with just just a distorted texture, I guess you can say. So now what we can do is we can put this on overlay. And we'll go ahead and shift click on this stuff again. So I'm gonna click on this first layer, hold shift, click on this bottom layer, press control uh, J, then control E, and then filter, blur, and then for whatever reason, I whenever I'm doing thumbnails, I'm always using blur. And I figured out if you use motion blur, you can go ahead and get these really cool little streaks that looks very freaking clean, already looks really nice and clean. And you see here I have these preset settings at negative 50 for my angle, which is just an angle of the how the direction they're going. You can go up and down. Uh, you can go this way, that way. If you put it like on a 180 degree, you get this really weird like almost like a motion blurred. Uh, well, obviously motion blurred, more of a Gaussian blur, excuse me, which is just very weird. So just keep it on slant to get this little streaks, right? And I'm going to go ahead and change that back to negative 50. And then my distance is at 270. If you put it any, uh, any higher, you just get very more of a, a how do you get more form, formal streaks or just more streaks. It just looks cool. I'll just keep it on, I'll say here is fine. So I'll just put it on 1,000. Why not? So with that being said, you can put that, I had it on 270. You can see the 2,000 or the, the 2,000 and 270. You can see the difference. You can kind of see the textures a little bit more on 270. That's why I just have it on 270. You can do whatever you want. Anyway, press OK. And I'm, I'm going to do it one more time just because I can. I'm going to go ahead and get more texture in the thumbnail, and I'll use this one, why not? And now, for whatever reason, if you guys do not see your brush, and you see you're trying to shrink and you can't see it yet, it's most likely because you have your cap locks on for some reason, you might have clicked it, but that's another little issue that you might run into. Um, there we go. Go ahead and put this on overlay now. Uh, shift click on this together. Control J, Control E, and then filter, blur, uh, motion blur, and then I'll do this again. And maybe I'll put this one higher this time. And we'll go ahead and press OK. And now we have what we basically had before in the background here is a nice, you know, streaks going. So now what I'm going to do is I kind of don't like this color too much. I kind of want to get the same purple I had before because I think that looks really good. So I'm going to use U and Saturation. Now, if you guys do not know, if you're using U and Saturation and you already have like a very vibrant, maybe like a green or a very just vibrant yellow or something, if you use U and Saturation, you're most likely not going to get colors that look good unless you start all the way over again and move, use a darker color, which is like more of like a red or orange or a dark blue. Because you'll know, you'll, you'll, you probably already know that. If you use a cube saturation on some colors, it just does not work. But I'm going to see if it works for here. And I think I can get the same color that I got before. Which wasn't too, like, I don't know. It was very dark looking. <laughs> More of a dark purple. Or a pinkish. It was something like that. I don't know, I'm trying to match this color I have over here. But you can see here, I'm kind of far off. But you can see I'm trying to go for it. But anyway, what I'm going to do, why not? I'll just use a different color. I'll show you with, uh, show a little technique here. What a soft brush. I'm going to use maybe, uh, what do I, let's use a green or something. I think if we go ahead and just go over the parts I kind of don't like. Let me go over here and go to Vivid Light. We can get different tones of that color. And like it kind of like combines the two colors together. I think it looks pretty cool. I don't know, not too much. Maybe I'll fix it later in the video. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some cur uh, curves on this really quickly. Like so. We'll put that curve below that. And actually, I think what's too, it's, I think it's just too vibrant really quickly. So what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and use my adjacent layers, go to uh, brightness and contrast. I'm just going to lower my brightness and I'm going to lower my contrast. And I think that's what it was. Yes, it was. It was just too vibrant. You, you, like I said before, I, I was not like mining it, but I was just telling you guys before, if you use a vibrant color and use hue and saturation, you might not get the colors you kind of want. So now what I did was I lowered it a little bit and lowered my contrast and my brightness. And I got this very nice color you can see here now. And now I'm happy with it. So what I want to go ahead and do now is I'm just going to go ahead and do little streak things where I showed you guys how to do this. These little cool little indention things. You probably already know how to do it, but if you don't, it's okay if you're new to Photoshop or something. We're going to go ahead and make a new layer. Press M on our keyboard, which is a rectangle marquee tool. Very little cool, uh, cool tool here. Just to make some rectangles. 
Now we're going to go ahead and make like our width about 640, which would be the diameter of our canvas. If I did not say that already, I am so sorry. I'll put it in the description below as well. But the canvas of this, the canvas settings, is file new. I'll put this in the comments as well, just in case. I don't know why I didn't say this in the first place. But it's file new, 1280 by 720p pixels. Resolution 200 is like my default uh, thumbnail settings. So that can be your default thumbnail settings as well. And it works perfectly fine. You can see how my thumbnails look like. And that's just the thumbnail's uh, dimensions there. I don't know why I didn't say that. Anyway, with the rectangle marquee tool, I'm going to make my width or my height about maybe like, I guess, point zero point five. Yeah, yeah, point zero five. And I'm going to go ahead and just quick fill with any color. It doesn't really matter. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to lower my fill, not my opacity. Lower your fill because when you lower your opacity down, you won't be able to see anything. But when you lower your fill only, if I'm going to lower this all the way to zero, you can see this disappears. But when we double-click this layer and we apply any layer style to it, you can actually still see the layer style. So what I'm going to do here is press OK. Simply enough, I put an inner shadow. I didn't change my settings at all. And I'm going to right away, I'm just going to right click on this. And I'm going to press re uh, rasterize layer style so now I can't fix it or I can't like do anything with it. But it's OK. You really can't mess this part up because all I'm trying to do is make an indention here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just tilt it this way. I'm going to just try to like, uh, just, I guess, how do you say, eyeball it and try to see if I can match where the, the stroke is going. And that's pretty close. Maybe just a little tweak to the left. You'd be the judge of it. There we go. So now I'm going to do is I'm just going to duplicate it by holding Alt and just dragging it. Get some cool little streaks going. I'll put one close. Why not? Like that. I'll put some on this side as well. Boom. Boom. And then I'll put this one far away. That'll look cool, right? And now what I can do is if I use my eraser, since this layer is already rasterized, if you try to do this with the inner shadow still, like, or the layer style still showing, it'll look very distorted and weird. But if you rasterize your layer and you erase, you can see we can get some cool little indentions and like a cool little fadeaway stroke. So there we go, I'll leave that one there, and I'll just change this one, I'll erase it over here, and I'll make this one erase like down this way, and then the last one erase like something like that. Looks pretty cool. So you can see there, I just, I, you can do the entire thing, I kind of like just did the top left, or the top right, and then like bottom left. So now I'm going to do, I can pretty much just finish it off with using a, a nice little text here. Um, for this font that I use for this, well, on this thumbnail right here, I use G-Tech Technology. I'll put this in the description below for you guys as well. But I'm going to go ahead and put Creating. And I'll make this white. Control-A to select all your letters at once. Make this white. And I'll put Creating, just a thumbnails video. <laughs> thumbnails video. I'll put this on d -d 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 Nexa Bold, maybe? Oops. Nexa Bold. By the way, to pop this out right here, I've always, I've always had this. Uh, I'm just going to type this in capital letters. Thumbnail videos. Sure. Anyway, uh, I don't know why I just typed there. But anyway, if you guys if you don't know how to open this little table up here, your characters table, I just control A on my text, which is actually selects all my letters, and I press control T. You can see that this character thing pops up, and this is kind of where I stay at all times. I kind of even need to use control T because I have this like here. I just click here. But you can change your color here, and also you can change like separate fonts. So if I want to make thumbnail video like I was going to, next to bold and next to light, get two different tones there, two different like thicknesses of the font, make that bigger here. And also this VA is actually a separation between the letters. If I just click and drag to the right, I get some separation between the letters. It looks pretty cool. So press OK. And then why not? I'll just change videos to a, a nice secondary color, maybe like a green, right? Or something, right? Yeah, that looks fine. All right, cool. So now we have this done. Basically, you see, I, I already have everything basically what I had in this one. I'll go ahead and just actually just do this. Control and Control G to quick uh, group these together. You'll see here, I basically have everything I have here. But what I don't have is the outline edges right here, as well as I have like simple stocks in the background, like something like this, which I see my brush stock, my stock brush pack. I'll put that in the back as well, just because it looks cool. I think I like it. If you guys want it, of course, $5, I'll put it in the description below for you guys to purchase if you guys have yet to get it. But there's very simple stocks to make. I actually showed how to make it in my previous video. Uh, it was this one right here. I showed you how to make something like this. It was just rectangles and using motion blur or Gaussian blur. And here, I put it on overlay. And I thought it looked pretty cool. Simply just lower my opacity. So if you have a stock like this, or if you have a lighting stock, or your own lighting brush pack, or something like that, put it on the background, feel your you know stocks a little bit, and I'm gonna do is to get this little outline of like uh, different colors like this. What you can do is make a new layer, uh, press M on your keyboard again for the rectangle marquee tool, highlight the entire canvas, and go ahead and go to select modify border, and then with five pixels press OK. Make sure your foreground color is on white. 
and then press alt back so it's a quick fillet and then put this on overlay and what you have here is something you can erase just like so around up and there we go and now you have this little cool little outline like glow almost so with that being said that's pretty much it what I can do almost maybe if I can do this now let's take this green be on my keyboard hold alt to select the color and I'm gonna take this green really quickly <clears throat> and see what I can get here if I just kinda like went around like this and what if I try this vivid light thing boom what colors will I get something different I'll get something like ooh, orangey I'm not quite sure if I like this too much because I'm just testing things out and that's kinda what I did with the the practice example banner I'm gonna lower this down and now I have these two very nice cool little darker tones of like this two uh, different multicolor backgrounds here so I'll just go ahead and just feel with that. And I think that looks pretty cool. All right, cool. So to finish it off, another new layer, a nice little white brush, nice little white soft brush hit, just like so. Make my dammer a little more bigger, and then boom. There we go. Lower my opacity down, and we have a nice little thumbnail. And I'll go ahead and just put a nice little curve on it at the end. There we go. Sweet. So you guys see, I made some really cool little uh, little streaks in the background. I went along and showed you guys how to do these little cool little indention things, as long as this little border stuff. And hopefully, if you guys don't know, like I said, if you guys are like struggling with back uh, background banners or excuse me, backings for like banners or thumbnails or whatever it may be, try using motion blur things or motion blur. Uh, radial blur looks really cool as well. I'll just show you what it does really quickly. Why not? Right? Oops. Press Control K, not Control J. If I use uh, blur, radial blur. You'll see if I put it on zoom and best and just change my amount a little bit, you get these cool little, like, it almost looks like it's popping out. And it doesn't really look good here, but you can see, if you just test it out yourself, you'll, you'll get these really cool little, uh, little backings where you, you might, like, freaking, like, love, and you can't get away from it like me. And I don't know. I think it looks pretty cool. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video today, and I completed off your little, uh, rebrand stuff. So maybe you'll go back and be like, oh, I get it. You were trying to do a rebrand. Maybe I should do it now. You know, go ahead and just watch the other videos and enjoy them as well. So thank you guys so much for watching this cool little series here. I know you guys didn't catch on until the end. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like, all that cool stuff. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at SessoHQ. Don't forget to check out my Selfie, Selfie.com, SessoHQ, for any cool pre-mades and packs, including my everything pack for $30 one purchase. You get everything in my store for free. And as well as everything that comes out gets emailed to you for free as well with no charge at all. No matter what the price is, you get an email for you for free. So thank you guys so much and forever whoever's on like summer vacation i applaud you i know it was a hard struggle but you got it done now we gotta wait for next year and just like you know to cry all over again but anyway for you guys who are aren't on summer vacation i feel very very bad for you because i've been on it for like off of it for like what three weeks now um it's just kind of crazy because i've been i feel like i've been on school for like months <laughs> it's been like weeks anyway thank you guys so much for watching to switch you out peace have a great day creators that was weird i'm gonna just, yeah, I'm just gonna end the video Oh,